Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. We continue this month's theme of pulmonary patterns. It's time to take a breath. Our journey continues through the four broad classifications of pulmonary patterns. As a reminder, it's always important to keep these findings in the context of patient history and exam. A short commentary is included after the case about the pattern, and today's will be more extensive in the report. Today's example is a 13-year-old male-neutered Lhasa Apso who has presented for chronic cough with a mildly increased bronchovesicular sound in his caudal left thorax. He has been responsive to steroids and antitussives. As we review this series of radiographs, principally what we observe is that there are increased conspicuity of the markings of the left principal bronchus, left caudal principal bronchus, as well as the larger caliber airways. As we magnify this area and adjust our window width and window leveling, we do appreciate that these airways are well defined as we can take a fine tipped pencil and draw the beginning and ends of these airways. If we compare this to the contralateral airways, we note that we can barely observe the margins of the right caudal lung, lobar bronchus, and large caliber airways. The remaining structures within the thorax, including the cardiac silhouette, the vasculature, the remaining parenchyma, mediastinum, and pleural space are unremarkable. Although only partially included, our impressions are that the hepatic silhouette extends beyond the costal arch. Our conclusions for this patient are that the bronchial changes of the left caudal lung lobe have a differential diagnosis, including chronic bronchitis or potential scarring from prior inflammation. We also suspect that this patient has hepatomegaly, which could represent a vacuolar hepatopathy, for instance, secondary to Cushing syndrome, among other metabolic diseases, nodular regeneration, fat infiltration, or less likely metastatic neoplasia. The localized changes of the left caudal airways are suggestive of a regional pathology such as focal bronchitis. While this can be more generalized and frequently is in dogs of a mature age, focal disease can occur with infection or foreign body. Subtle parenchymal changes may not be apparent radiographically and intraluminal changes may also not be evident in radiographic exam. These can be further explored with high resolution, breath hold computed tomography and bronchoscopy with possible lavage if findings are evident in tomographic exam. This patient has been previously diagnosed with sterile bronchitis. While the large airways should be able to be characterized with the relative boundaries of the arteries and veins, so this is a pulmonary artery and this is a pulmonary vein, and the veins tend to run central and ventral. The walls itself should not be distinct excepting the very large caliber airways in the region of the hilus on radiographic exam. The pulmonary artery tracks closely with the bronchus while the vein is slightly separate. And this offers a relative idea of the size of the airway and the path of the airway. When the airway wall is thickened, the margins can be either well-defined or poorly defined. And this can provide some insight into the current state and chronicity of the disease process that we're investigating. A well-defined bronchial pattern, as we see in today's example, has sharp margins of the airway. In other words, one could take, as we discussed, a fine tip pencil and outline the margins of the airway. And this means that the body has had time to adequately remodel the margins and suggest that it's chronic. 
This is in contrast to a poorly defined bronchial pattern, which is characterized similarly by thickened walls, however, often has margins that are less distinct. An example is provided in the report. This is more consistent with an acute process as the body has not had sufficient time to remodel the airways. The exception that we'll see to this general pattern of behavior is when a patient with chronic disease and chronically remodeled airways has an acute crisis. The imaging findings of these airways may be a little bit misleading, however, there are usually other radiographic changes that can indicate acute respiratory distress. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case. Thanks for listening, and remember, it's your case, so please post your questions to social media.